Hey guys, welcome back into Reignited. Now we have something extra special for you today. We have a brand new tool in the shop that is going to change the game for us. This is a CNC plasma table. I'm gonna be able to build all sorts of amazing stuff. I really hope you guys like the new content with it. Let's go ahead and get this thing put together and start building some cool stuff. Now this might sound kind of funny you guys, but to be honest, I'm actually kind of emotional right now about this because this is something that I have wanted for so long and would really change things for me. Uh, if you are as passionate about fabrication as I am, this is one of those next logical steps that you kind of have to take if you want to elevate your skill sets to the next level because honestly, there's only so far you can get with an angle grinder and a bandsaw. You can do a lot of different stuff and you can make a lot of cool stuff, but Machines like this are really what takes you up to that next level and allows you to try new things that you've never done before. And that's what keeps me passionate about fabricating. What I have here is the Crossfire Pro, which is a three foot by four foot table. Should be plenty big enough for anything I'm going to do with it. Also guys, a quick note, Langmuir Systems did not send this to me for free. I actually paid for this with my own money. However, the only reason I had that money is because of you guys. You've been watching my videos, you've been commenting, you've been engaging, you've been following along. And really that absolutely means the world to me because it's allowed me to purchase a tool like this that's going to elevate my content for you guys. So it's this big symbiotic circle here. I just wanna say thank you so much for everything you've done on your end. Let's get this thing done. Now, if you're a fan of some of the other fabrication-based YouTube channels out there, you've probably seen Langmuir Systems stuff before. They have a lot of different plasma tables out there. They've been promoting a lot on YouTube. However, that's not the reason why I went with this particular model. The reason I went with this one is because a coworker of mine, shout out to you, Brad, he's had one of these for the last year and a half, and it has worked really well for him. He's made a lot of really cool stuff. He actually uses his to build more artistic based stuff. And he's actually smart and he actually uses his to make money for him. <laughs> so, but it's done really well for him. He's had no problems with it whatsoever. And so that's what I was looking for. Just something that's going to be reliable and work really well. So that's what the experience that he's had, that's what convinced me to go with the exact same model. All right, real quick, I wanna talk about why I actually pulled the trigger on this machine. Now, for as long as I can remember, my philosophy has always been, well, I don't have very much money, but my time is free, so may as well take a little bit longer building stuff by hand, and then I can actually accomplish more because I didn't have enough money to buy all the parts that I needed anyway, so if I can just save some money using my labor, then I could buy more parts and continue with my projects. Now, this last project with the Magnum has kind of changed my thought process on that, and I'll tell you why. Building this intake manifold entirely by hand has been a massive constraint on my time. I have around 45 hours of labor just into the intake manifold itself. And to be honest, just like you guys, I don't have a whole lot of time to be out here working on this stuff. My time is very, very limited. And then I also realized that my time is the one thing that I cannot replace. Once that is gone, it is gone and I can't get it back. So my time is in fact, my most valuable resource. So I realized that yes, this is a little bit more money in the front end of things to get this, but the amount of things and the amount of time I'm going to save by having this to actually move forward with my projects is going to be a massive, massive game changer for me. And that's why I decided to actually invest in this machine because I really think it's gonna pay off. So one of the only issues that you'll find if you look up reviews on this particular kit is that they ship out the water table in two separate pieces here. And what they want you to do is butt this thing together, throw some bolts in it, and throw some sealer in the middle there to keep it from leaking. Now, it seems like a lot of people have trouble with that sealer getting it to actually seal correctly. Other people don't, but I'm not even gonna worry about any of that because I have the capability. Once I get this thing bolted together, I'm just gonna go ahead and weld the entire seam all the way across. I don't want to have to deal with any kind of leaks or anything like that, and it's easy enough for me to do, so we'll do that.
So I know one of the things that people were complaining about with these Crossfire Pro units is that there is a lot of assembly required, which I always thought was kind of a strange thing to complain about when if you're buying one of these things, you are the kind of person who likes to put things together yourself. That was a little confusing to me. Yes, there are a lot of instructions, but the instructions are actually really detailed and actually clear. And importantly too, all of the hardware seems to be of decent quality. That was definitely something I was very concerned about while putting this together, that the hardware would be really cheap and would gall and bind. It actually was really good. I had no problems at all with that. Now I did have one bonehead error. Now you guys saw that I worked really hard to actually weld this seam on this water table so I wouldn't have any leaks whatsoever. And then I went to actually screw the table down to the frame itself and I made a stupid mistake. So the kit comes with these self-tapping screws that actually have a ceiling washer built into them. I was not paying attention and I just used the regular self-tapping screws on the frame itself. So I went through all this effort to weld the center seam. That way I wouldn't have any leaks and then I go and make a stupid mistake like that. So I had to, actually I tried to take those self-tappers out and replace them with the correct self-tappers but these are actually a smaller diameter than the other ones, so they wouldn't work. So here was my solution instead. All right, as you guys will see in this next clip, what I did was I went ahead and removed those self-tappers from the frame and added in some of this Mopar 3-Bond silicone. Now, if you don't know anything about this 3-Bond, this is essentially a very strong silicone that seals very, very well. I believe, I'm not positive, but I believe it's the exact same thing as Honda Bond, and it probably comes out of the exact same tube. They just changed the numbers on the front of it. But again, like I said, it's a very good sealing silicone and you definitely don't want to have to remove anything that you've already sealed with it because it is just that strong. So this should keep us from having any leaks in our water table. Another thing to keep in mind is that because this is a plasma cutter, you will need to have some compressed air available in your shop of sufficient volume to run a plasma cutter. So that's one additional thing you'll have to have. Also, you need to go ahead and do the electrical wiring necessary to run 220 for the plasma cutter itself. Now, I just went ahead and got the plasma cutter that was recommended with the Langmuir Pro system. So it was an easy plug and play setup, no questions there. As with any new shop tool that you acquire, there is going to be a learning curve involved. And there's no question that there's going to be a learning curve with this as well. You have to learn new software because you actually have to design your part using Fusion 360, and then you have to convert it into a file that the fire control program can actually see to cut it out. So obviously a learning curve involved there. I went ahead and started in on my first part that I'm building. All right, here is the actual flange that we're designing for. You can see it's something of an awkward shape. You got this big oval here and then this little bump up here. So certainly something you could cut out by hand, but not really something you wanna cut out by hand. I thought this would be a great first project to do with this machine to show the capabilities of what it can do. So I went ahead and drew that up on Fusion 360. I'll go ahead and give you a look here at what we're trying to cut out. All right, so here is the flange that I designed. Now the thickness is not actually representative of what it really is, but you can see that this is kind of the basic shape we're going for. And I believe I've got this thing converted into the proper code for the fire control to cut it out. Not entirely positive that I have all the settings right. I probably don't have them right, but you're going to see my first ever attempt on cutting something out on this machine. So I'm not quite ready to cut out the actual flange just yet. I wanna go ahead and run the process first to see how this thing cuts out, see if I'm doing it correctly before I waste any of my real material. So here is my test piece. This is one of the skins from my old TIG welder that no longer functions. So I'm gonna put this up there, get it cut out on this, see how it turns out. One of the neat things we can do with this is that after we have our program in our computer here and we want to cut it out, but we don't quite want to cut it just yet, we kind of just want to see what it'll do, you can actually do a dry run with the machine and actually watch it cut and make sure it's going to stay where you want it to go. So my dry run looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to cut this thing out. You guys are gonna see the very first attempt to actually cut something out. I have no idea how this is gonna go. Let's give it a shot.
Yep, looks just like the program. Oops. <laughs> Sweet. All right, let's see if this thing actually fits. Now, remember, if there is a problem with this, it's because I wrote the program wrong as far as sizing and everything. Woo. We're close though. Looks like my holes are just a little bit off as far as the depth from here to here. But that's very close. Let me open this up real quick. I got those holes opened up a little bit here. <laughs> and yet, not quite enough. Very close though. Okay, so you guys can see here that clearly my drawing itself needs a little bit of adjustment. My holes need to be more centered on there. And also too, on this bottom edge, there's not quite enough material down here. So I wanna add just a little bit more here, maybe an eighth of an inch along this bottom edge, and then I can recut this thing out. Now I'm gonna do a couple more test pieces with it before I cut it out in the real thing. I'm going to be using quarter inch aluminum for this flange to make my little throttle body mount here. Now I have to make an adapter because obviously a throttle body does not have the oval shape here, at least a Dodge one does not, which is what I'm using. So there's going to be an adapter here to the throttle body and then my intercooler piping will connect to that. This is the perfect project to test out this tool on because it is such an awkward shape. There's going to be some really interesting shapes to actually make this adapter for the throttle body work. And I just cannot believe that my very first attempt turned out like this. Now, obviously some adjustments need to be made here, but it's not really a big deal. There's some refinements to the machine settings as well. I can use to help clean things up just a little bit, but that is just so cool drawing something up on a computer and then the machine just cuts it out for you. And this thing, obviously it's working exactly as it should. I'm so excited about this. I cannot wait for the opportunities this will bring in the future. But for right now, you guys, we'll see you next time on Reignited.